Welcome back, we everybody. Back. Very short break. And some clowns have magically appeared in our studio in the from? last 10 minutes. So Where look at that. They're from? adorable. <laughs> uh, we have a really fun um, one for this one. We got Ori joining us talking mm -hmm. about uh, their facility and what they do. Blue Friday is in full effect. Full effect. Full effect going on right now. We got sales all up to 20%. Go to check out the website, see what's going on there. Fresh water, salt water, all that good stuff. Yep. So again, you guys, we're talking about in this episode, we're talking about aquaculture and sustainability with ORA. Let's get started. Yep. Alrighty, never get tired of no, watching that intro. No, I don't have my it. ear piece in. I like I hear it in it. my it gets head. me all pumped up. <laughs> um, so, uh, all right, guys, we're giving away ten thousand dollars in prizes today. Okay. So you got to stick around all day to win those. For the very last prize, we're giving away a twenty-five hundred dollar gift card to Waterbox Aquarium. Wow. Um, 7 p.m. You're going to want to stick around for that. It's going to be a cool episode. You do have to um, enter on our website for that, for the entry for the grand prize. The other giveaways are being done in each stream. Yep. And uh, sales are going on on the website up to 20%. Um, salt water, fresh water lines, filter socks, all that good stuff. It ends at 11.59 p.m. tomorrow. Tomorrow. So you do have two tomorrow. And we have some awesome giveaways that are going to be going on in this stream. you got to stay tuned and be engaged and comment and all that good stuff. So we have... We originally had um, ORA Mandarin as a giveaway, ORA Frag Pack, and they have surprised us with a third add-on to that, which is an ORA Clam Pack, yes. along with two Waterbox t-shirts to give away, and a $400 Waterbox gift card as it's well. Just, if you guys haven't noticed, the That's gift card six. keeps going up and up it and is. up <laughs> all the way until we get to that $2,500 max prize, which is awesome. I want to remind you guys, like, share, subscribe. Um, and hit those notifications on YouTube because we are here every single week, every Wednesday. Yeah. So, um, I also want to, I got to touch on it, Jess. Got to. It's we kind made of a big. huge announcement today. <laughs> we have a new tank system. It's the largest production rimless aquarium system in the world um, called Promax. So, let's take a look. Never get tired of looking at that one. Yes. It's beautiful. 
Yes. So check out the Pro Max. You can check out the website for more details. Um, looking forward to seeing those hitting out in the market. And I think we have a whole bunch of clownfish here. <laughs> and uh, they seem to be pointing towards our guests here from ORA. We've got yes. Jordan and Donna here. Hey! So welcome, you guys. Welcome. Thank you for coming into the studio. Again, third year coming here to join us because you always have great content, great conversation. So you we appreciate guys it. You can't have Blue Friday without water bottles. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. So we came on today, we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, a little part of ORA that I think doesn't get a lot of attention, which is our clam farm out in the Marshall Islands, where we do a lot of uh, aquaculture of clams and coral species. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of a two-part to our company, and we do a lot of great things out there that I think everyone out there needs to see. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's quite a, it's an amazing operation, so I'm, I'm excited to share it with our viewers. Thanks. And there's a ton of them today, by the way. Oh, well, so. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so. so you've got us some... Uh, images and stuff. You want to show the slides that you brought? Like, Let's start going up. through those. Let's, let's All right. Going. All right. We're going to take you eight thousand miles away <laughs> to a little atoll in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Close your eyes and there imagine. You Ooh, look at that! Ooh. I, can, I can see myself there. It's nice. <laughs> Matter of fact, degrees, a soft breeze. Beautiful. <laughs> You're out there on the water. So yeah, as I mentioned, this is about eight thousand miles away from here, <clears> anyways, uh, in a little atoll uh, called the Marshall Islands. Uh, Majuro is where we are. Uh, we actually operate a clam farm um, where we pretty much have a rich abundance of lots of things to choose from. So corals, for one. Ooh. The reefs out there are really spectacular, straight out of magazines. Um, wow. That's no, no end to kind of the variety, the colors. So we've got a, a wide palette of corals to choose from when we are selecting corals uh, for kind of commercial propagation. So again, this is just kind of what it looks like. That's a beautiful reef to see out would, in Yeah, that nature, is yeah. stunning. I would it is absolutely rushing. dream to scuba dive that. Have you have you dove those? I actually out? got to back in December. Whoa! Uh, it was it was really remarkable. Nice. That's awesome. Ooh. So again, just is that you? That is not me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's see. What do we got? The next one I think is you know. So once we find some corals that got some uh, potential color, some good shape. We're going to take a little piece uh, from a wild colony and we're going to put it into production, try to see how fast it grows, how well it grows in our uh, conditions, and uh, whether or not it's going to be a good candidate for kind of a commercial operation. So we get our pieces and we, we do a very similar job to what we do at our Florida uh, facility, where we take a frag, we make frags of those frags, and uh, over the next <coughs> couple months, we're making as many as we can. Uh, in these underwater trays you see here. Wow. So whereas you know our facility here in Florida has a greenhouse, uh, this is actually a greenhouse underwater. Uh, so we have so to go cool. to work every day. You've got to put on scuba gear. You're cleaning algae. You're cutting frags. You're scrubbing trays. Uh, you're keeping notes on inventory. Um, it, it's very much like any kind of aquaculture job here that's land-based. Only you're doing it under 35 feet of water right that's here. That's too <laughs> cool, though. <laughs> I know. Uh, so yeah, some of the stuff that we're raising, and obviously it's not just Acropora. We've got uh, LPS, like uh, your Ganeoporas here. Uh, Beautiful. Now, how to get those corals, once we've started to raise them, uh, to our facility here in Florida, and then to you, uh, the aquarist. So we select kind of a number of corals, uh, we get them all lined out. It takes about four hours to get all the corals we need into these boxes. Um, and then this is where the hard part is getting boxes 8,000 miles from a tiny island with uh, one airline, <laughs> um, it takes a good three days to wow. get all the way over here. Wow. So they, leave, they pack it on our time, which is a Sunday. We get it on a Wednesday. Now, do people live on that island? Or is there, is there like oh, a yeah, it's very populated for sure. Really? Mm -hmm. mm. Cool. Um, so a lot, there's actually several atolls uh, in the entire region. One of the ones that we've got a military base on is Kwajalein, um, pretty well known, beautiful area. Uh, but yeah, quite a lot of people live on a very small amount of space there. That's awesome. That's cool. Wow. So three days One to day get them here. One day me and Jess will visit. So you should. I mean, I'll, <laughs> I'll take that trip. <laughs> <laughs> um, so also yeah, similar to the corals, we've also do a lot of our clam operation there. So this is where we work with uh, Look at those bad boys. Yeah, Duraces. Huge. We got uh, Maximas. We got Scamosas, Hippopas. Uh, these are our broodstock clams. So these are obviously clams that we've raised up. They're very old. 
Um, and they're used, several of them, you know, multiple times to produce kind of all the clams that we see in fish stores nationwide. Wow. So in order to get a clam to spawn, um, you basically take them out of the water, you let them kind of sit, and you replicate kind of a, a low tide scenario. They, they're exposed to air, uh, it's hot, uh, but what that does is it triggers them to spawn, and after they spawn, you kind of like collect all that water uh, for the next couple hours in that trough. You wait for the eggs to connect with sperm, make sure all the cells are doing exactly what they need to do, and then what you do is you take that water and you put it in trays like this. Whoa. So these are big cement flow-through systems, water from the ocean is pumped in, um, and then you don't touch it for six months. You don't even look at it. You just wow. let them grow. After about six months, you can go in there um, and you can see all the little baby clams. You clean up all the algae, and then that's when you actually have to start kind of keeping up on and, and maintaining them. So it takes so six months amazing. for them to become little tiny itty bitty baby clams? Well, until you can see them. Like <laughs> right there, it looks like you're looking at like a jar full of sand. That is 5,000 baby maximum clams that are about two <laughs> months old. What? <laughs> oh my goodness. That's <laughs> insanity. It is. They're, they're ridiculously small when they're, when they're little. But uh, you can see they start to develop the colors. They start to get some size on them. Um, maximum clams about that size are about two and a half years old. And that's wow. only four to five centimeters, about an inch and a half. Wow. wow. Whereas a derasa clam takes uh, about 18 months, really, to get to your sellable three-inch size. Wow. So if anyone ever says clams are expensive, you know why. Yeah. It, does. <laughs> it takes a remarkable amount of time to get them to its size. You know, it's much easier just to take them out of the reef. Uh, much more challenging to raise them, but obviously the much better practice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if it's taking them that long on the reef out in the ocean to grow, and then you're just harvesting them so many right. and taking that long, like, you know, the fact that you guys are able to aquaculture them is so beneficial for the environment. I love like, it. Absolutely. Yeah. It gives Big time. It jobs for a lot of the people out there. It's it's a great opportunity for everybody. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, I love it. It's so cool. Little clams. So, wow. yeah, you can see, I mean, the colors, the grading, uh, they're beautiful. They are, they are. Even <laughs> under natural sunlight. I mean, that's, that's natural sunlight right there. Natural it sunlight is, is like I the mean, best. They show color from the top, absolutely. Yep, that's wow. true. Under blue lights, a lot of the blue clams just look dark. And they're yeah. well right. Yeah. And they're like snowflakes. I mean, these are clams that have, you know, very unique patterns, very unique colors. Uh, they're really, really highly desirable because of that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a lot of process to go into it. So one of the things I did want to kind of touch on is, uh, you know, having a facility out, out in the ocean does come with challenges. One of the biggest challenges is water temperature. Um, it's something that's not really uh, fully appreciated except kind of on our scale where even one degrees difference for a couple weeks at a time will bleach not only all of the wild corals that you'll see but also our own corals in our production. Oh mm. wow, so, one, like, degree. one degree. One degree, yeah. How, does, how often does that occur? Like that every kind year. of every year? <laughs> <laughs> every year it gets really hot, uh, a lot of corals bleach um, so there are some, some struggles. You, you pair that with rising water levels on little tiny atolls where the highest geographical point is only eight feet above sea level. Oh, wow. Um, it can be very challenging for everyone. Wow. So every year, basically going through a bleaching process. It, it gets worse every year, but uh, okay. you know, we, we start moving our corals a little bit deeper to get cooler water. Um, so there's kind of challenges all around, but water temperature is crucial. Just like in the home aquarium, yeah. uh, it's also brutal when it comes what to What is the corals. typical temperature in the water? There. Surprisingly, about 84 degrees. Wow. wow. Yeah, nice so nice that definitely that shows is. why a swing in one degree up is going to be detrimental. Right, yeah. exactly. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yes. Uh, we have a lot of questions coming in, and I'm going to talk loud because I don't have a mic on right now. But um, one of the questions is, how old should a tank be before you can put clams in? So how old should a tank be before you put a clam in? It's a great question. Um, I think one of the most crucial factors, I mean, does the tank already have live rock in it? If you already have like really nice established live rock, I think you've kind of already set the basis for having a lot of conditions uh, good for more sensitive animals. I mean, obviously you need to be uh, versed in magnesium, alkalinity, um, calcium. calcium levels, absolutely. Um, but as long as you can keep those things stable, typically your clams will do just fine. Follow up question, can any size tank have a clam? Right, so Keenan's asking, can any size tank have a clam in it? What do you think? I certainly wouldn't put them in nano systems or even like the Pico. I know some people get super crazy and they make coffee pot systems. Uh, so those I would say are definitely not contenders uh, for clams. But anything I'd say, you know, 40 gallons and up uh, would be a pretty good size system to put at least a 
Crosea or even a Maxima. In. You have to cool. consider like the small tanks. A lot of people are like, but my state, my water quality is good. You know, whatever. The uptake of them for calcium and nutrients and stuff and their light requirements don't match a lot of times what they can keep up with in a nano as far as elements sure. and you know calcium and stuff like that. And then you have to figure some of your clams get 12, 18 inches. Uh, or so bigger. or bigger or bigger. And it's shocking how quickly some of those uh, clams once they start putting on size drain the water of all the elements you need. A and lot. And that affects kind of all the other parameters, so it can be very challenging the smaller tank you go. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yes. Uh, do the colors fade when they get older? They don't. They maintain. Uh, and that's the case with some of our croseas. Uh, <coughs> the colors actually tend to get better from when they're smaller uh, to when they get a little bit larger. Very cool. And they're beautiful. Clams are, there's so many cool patterns that come with them and like just like little bits of color like every time you look at a clam that's right you'll see another color in it and it's just they're, they're every beautiful is I love Christmas. Them. we open the boxes we have no <laughs> idea what they're gonna look like it's really really exciting <laughs> yes they're beautiful yeah uh, we have a couple <clears throat> questions regarding when you showed the image that you said they stayed there for six months you didn't even look at them yeah what do they feed on during that time frame so light is crucial uh, they're also filter feeding, so they're pulling uh, microalgae from the water as well. When that's and that place, uh, the one in Marshall Island, you bring ocean water in to those right. vats, right? Right, because they're right okay. there. The, the ocean's <coughs> on both sides of you. Yeah, I remember. I think we talked before. Like you actually bring the water in and flush through with the clam system, mm -hmm. so they're getting natural food sources mm -hmm. and stuff that way. Okay, so the baby clams are filtering that. Got tons of questions coming in. Oh, Love it. Yeah. And we'll go back. Um, do you put the clams on the sand or on the rock? Which is better? So, great question. Uh, I think that depends on A, the species you have, and B, are your conditions appropriate for both of them? So, I'll start with, uh, let's say a Duresa. A Duresa is fine on the sand. I uh, would actually prefer to be in the sand, like a Squamosa or a Gigas clam. Um, the problems with some of the clams, like a Crocet or Maxima, you put them on the rocks, they're gonna stay there. So, they have threads that'll attach the rocks. It's almost damaging to the point of easily killing them if you if you hurt the clam uh, and trying to move it. So if you put it somewhere in your rock work, you better really like where it's at because <laughs> uh, you're not going to be able to move it. Yeah, I've always used to um, tell people, like, if you get one of those and you went up on the rock, put it on, like, another piece of small rock Fantastic. or, like, a shell, mm -hmm. and then have them attach their foot then there, the then you can move it and put it into place, yeah, and right. then you can always move them or whatever if you need to. So I used to always tell people, if you're getting, like, a maximum or something, put it on something else and then Great move idea. it wherever. Are clams dangerous to any other fish or corals? Don't know, what do you think? <clears throat> uh, depending on the size of the aquarium, uh, let's say your clam doesn't make it in your system, uh, it can release toxins uh, back into the water. Uh, I mean, you gotta think of this thing being a, essentially like a super live filter, right? So everything that it's filtering um, to replenish what it needs uh, is within its mantle, so if it suddenly, you know, kind of deteriorates within your system, it is going to start releasing things into your tank. Um, but overall, it, it's not going to attack anything. Uh, it kind of stays put for the most part. Um, the myth anything, of, the, of the clam hurting yeah. the uh, scuba diver. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's not, not real. <laughs> you, you'll oftentimes see a lot of fish inside <clears throat> mantles of clams, uh, cleaner gobies, uh, small little trimmer gobies. They're, they'll be just fine. Yeah. Cool. Um, another person is asking, Dubin M is asking, what is the key success to keeping a small Maxima clams in a reef tank? I would say probably the most underappreciated thing is probably lighting. You want bright light. Uh, probably the warmer spectrum is as well. A lot of these clams live in very shallow water, so the light spectrum they're getting is going to be very white, very you know warm, um, and with kind of the current trend with more blue spectrum lighting, I don't think the clams really fully appreciate that uh, as much <laughs> as they would you know a more warmer spectrum. Cool. Another reason why they look their best under the warmer color temperatures too, because sure. that's naturally kind of like what Very they nice. are going to do. Water. Yep. I'll throw one more question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're coming like crazy, but I'm going to ask this one: How deep of a sand bed do you need to house plants? Oh, I mean, you could probably have a very shallow, you know, two inches would be just fine. Most of the time, what will end up happening is the foot will kind of go through the sand and attach just to the bottom of the aquarium. Cool. Very cool. The next slides that we have are your fish, if you want to go into Sure, yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. One of the things I wanted, we wanted to talk about today were some of the, the progresses in fish that we've come out with this year uh, that are very exciting that you're going to be enjoying. So obviously, you know, 2020 has kind of thrown uh, challenges for everyone, you know, hobby, the industry. Um, 
and it certainly has posed some challenges for us uh, production wise and logistically uh, but you know it hasn't slowed us down as far as production and what we're wanting to achieve for the hobby um, in that you know wanting to create a 100% aquacultured aquarium that's mm -hmm. what we started with that's what we certainly want to finish with uh, but we want to also diversify what we have to offer to the hobby uh, as well so this year we kind of started working uh, more heavily, I'd say, with pelagic species, uh, most notably, you know, our selection of angelfish. Um, so we, I think we're up to five now, five angelfish. Sure, you know. Um, or at least four. Four angelfish and the fifth to be released uh, probably within Coming the next soon. the next few months or so. Uh, definitely into 2021 for sure. Um, we've also started working with chalk bass, which is one of my all-time favorites. I know last year when we were here, I said my all-time favorite was the marine beta, uh, and it still holds uh, true, but look at that go. thing. It is that absolutely is cool. adorable. They are uh, so stunning when they're bigger and like the way they shimmer. They're beautiful. And they are an amazing uh, species to have in groups in a tank. Uh, they're very communal, uh, although they are part of the basslet family. Uh, they only get about three inches, so you can have multiples in one tank. Uh, Very suitable. underappreciated, for yeah, sure. Oh, for sure. And they're suitable for nano aquariums as well as larger reef systems. They won't get lost in a larger reef, uh, but they will definitely be out and about uh, doing their thing. Um, another thing that we worked on this year and released was our dragonettes, so all of our mandarins, uh, as well as our scooters. Um, so those actually... Um, We're not exactly sure which ones they are, but we'll go through the fish. <laughs> <laughs> hold up, hold up, yeah, just pull up all the pictures. Okay, here you go. Uh, okay. Look at that guy. This is actually a damsel. So we can go, go on to the next one. Oh, this yeah. is actually our zombie, which uh, up until this morning, I had not realized that last year this time we actually released our zombie fish. So really? uh, cool. our black zombie ocellaris. Looks like uh, something that you it's found kind behind of freaky, your aquarium. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you haven't seen it for months, it's like and a, there it is. It's like a deep sea clownfish. It does look like a deep sea clownfish. It's a little, <laughs> little scary, everyone, but pretty cool. They are, yeah, they are a trip. <laughs> There. So here we go Look with our, our dragonets. <laughs> so we actually have been working with blue mandarins, our spotted green target mandarins, and uh, coming soon will be our red mandarins. Okay, cool. Um, so we are, we're on that mandarin trend. We are loving it. They are small. Uh, seller size is about one inch. We found that those actually ship the best and hmm. have the best longevity uh, for our hobbyists. Um, so expect them to come in small, but also expect them to eat pretty readily within your aquarium. So they are actually feeding on uh, dry foods as opposed to just copepods. Uh, so you don't need a fully established seeded system, uh, but you want to make sure that you are adding a diversity of foods uh, to be able to sustain these guys. They're adorable. They're so cute. What is that thing? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I didn't want to say in that case you knew what it was. It's a uh, pink smith damsel fish. I was like, I knew the damsel. I was like, I don't know which one though. <laughs> yes. We've done a lot of work with damsels yes. this year. So we've got, you know, one of the first images you saw was our azure damsel. We've got the pink smith. We've got the lemons. We've got the yellowtail blues. Uh, really an unappreciated fish in the, the hobby. People, you know, see them all the time at every pet store, but mm -hmm. you're being harvested from the wild in the millions. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So we're doing our best to kind of Get this little fish some light. Uh, are they less aggressive when they are captive bred? I wouldn't say they're less aggressive, uh, okay. but the species we're working with are less. Not, are, are some of the least aggressive. Not least the obnoxious. most angry of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> some damsels are just really rude, and so these are less aggressive version of them. Okay. Right. Then we've also been working a lot with our uh, cleanup crews this year, so really focusing in on uh, cleaner shrimp and uh, sarah snails um, coming in from our Marshall Island facility. We are then kind of distributing them across the country. Very um, cool. And anything to kind of cut down that algae, every hobbyist loves. Yeah. The less you have to put your hands in the system, the better. Absolutely. Ooh, there we go. look at that. This is our flame angel, uh, 127 days old. Um, and it's actually one of the longest 
angelfish that we produce to go from um, spawn to through metamorphosis. Um, typical timing for that is about 45 to 50 days, uh, whereas with the flame angel, it's actually 90 days. Wow. wow. Which is significant. That's a long commitment of time, and then growing them. And that's for a very one fish. tiny fish. That yeah. little image there is, is probably just a little bit bigger than your, your pinky finger now. I mean, they were wow. very tiny. We got a flame back. Oh, hey, hey. you know your fish. <laughs> 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 and this is our cherub angel, also 45 days. To 60 days to produce. Nice little Caribbean species for sure. Mm -hmm. And when you guys do your angels, do you try to stick to ones that are reef safe or is it kind of go both ways? Uh, we're working a lot with the Centropygy uh, yeah. genus right now. So just these small pygmy angels, I think they've got a broad appeal because they, they do great not only in your larger aquariums mm -hmm. but also uh, your smaller small. systems mm -hmm. as well. And they're relatively reef safe. I would say exactly. They uh, relatively <laughs> all of yeah. which, except I would say the flame angel. I would feel comfortable putting in a reef. Mm -hmm. Flame angels tend to pick, I think, a little bit more than some of your other angel fish. Yeah, uh, flame backs I think are great. Yeah, yeah. I love little, the little dwarf and pygmy angels. Oh, They're great adorable. for nanos, big tanks. Um, there's a lot of different varieties and colors too, so it's cool absolutely. to see you guys uh, growing them now. Mm -hmm. Wow. Cool. Is that those pictures? That's all. Yeah. That was it. Okay. We got it. <laughs> So, I imagine there's a lot more up in your sleeve for the next year. That maybe we're going to find it out next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've got corals. We've got fish coming. I mean, we're, we're here for the hobbies, the Aquarius. We want you to have that 100% fully aquacultured aquarium. We'll do it for you. I love that because, you know, that, that's one of the reasons we wanted to talk about this topic because I think it's so important for the hobby. Um, that's why we bring you guys every year. That just sustainability in general is huge for our industry, and you guys are, mm -hmm. have always been on the forefront of that. So. Thank you. Oh, the and first, never more yeah. so important than right now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. One of the big issues this year, uh, obviously with COVID, were cancellations of domestic uh, flights, and even international flights, I should say. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't appreciate that the way we get animals for our hobby come on those uh, passenger airplanes. So yeah. when those flights get canceled, Nothing can come in from the wild, yeah. uh, which makes aquaculture, domestic aquaculture, you know, so much more important for the longevity yeah. of our hobby. Absolutely. Yeah, and the less Love we're it. touching the reefs and the ocean and stuff and pulling, you know, live animals and corals off of there, the right. better. Um, you know, because the hobby continues to grow at a rapid rate. Sure. So that's more people needing more corals and more fish, and there's only but so much that can come from the ocean right. that we have to really redirect all of our, as much focus as possible onto the aquaculture of everything. 100%. Otherwise, the hobby won't exist forever. Yep. So. Yep. So, tell these guys where they can find Ore, and then your fish and your corals and sure, sure. how they can find you. I do have a link uh, to their website <coughs> in the description, but tell them where they can go so, find your product. Yeah, we've got a huge, wide, nationwide network of Ore partners. Uh, I would say the best thing to do is go to our website, reach out to us. Uh, Don and I are there. We're ready to help you out. Uh, one of the best things we like to do is to actually coordinate with your local fish store, getting our animals to them and then to you. Absolutely. Cool. Alrighty. Well. <laughs> shirts. Shirts. Let's do some shirts. Giveaways. <laughs> Cannon directs the giveaways. We're just waiting for him to tell us what to do. <laughs> <laughs> we don't really know. All right. So we're doing shirts now. We're doing two t-shirts. All right. Ready? Winners of the t-shirt. Oh, oh. Mermaid's oh. Reef. That's got to be YouTube. And yep, Kyle Roth. <laughs> Congratulations on your shirts. There's our winners there. Unless someone's name is actually a mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fancy last name. <laughs> There's all kinds of trends in names. You, you never, never know. know. You never yeah. know. Um, all right. Got another shirt? Yeah. No, that was two shirts. No, that was a two shirt. Oh, yeah. We no, that was two people. <laughs> or a fish or a clam pack and the frag pack. There all right, we're listening. We're saying them all at one time. All, one all right, time. this is for people. all the ORA things. Good. Where's our Duke's? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every time they come up, because we've not, never seen the names before, so we're always yeah. like, what? Like what? All right, Duke Siri for Ori Fish. And Jacob Medina. Congratulations. Congratulations, you guys. Reach out to winner at waterboxacrayons.com to claim your prize there. And, of course, we still have the Waterbox gift card. Oh, yes. $400. $400 for a new water box. Well, we're ready. Cool. Let's do a winner. Jace Jay Coops. Coops. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say Jay Scoops. We're not but laughing. At <laughs> somewhat dyslexic. We're not laughing at the names. It's more of like our reaction every time it comes up. So. All right, Jay Coops. Obviously, what uh, YouTube? I would say. 
Uh, $400 Waterbox gift card. Congratulations for all of the winners there. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Thank you for yes. your three giveaways. Oh, so fantastic. good to the feed and coming yeah. in and bringing all your little cute clownfish Aww. to our studio <laughs> table. Uh, we always love having you guys here. Thank you for having yeah, us. And it's so always a lot of, sure. everyone loves all the information. People are going crazy for baby clams and fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we've got plenty for your water box aquariums. There you go. There you go. <laughs> thank all you. All right. Guys. Well, thank you guys. We appreciate it. And guys, we're going to be back here in just about 30 minutes. About 30 so minutes, five o'clock. Our next stream is... We're talking about freshwater. Oh, it's freshwater time. Yeah, hey. so we're giving the freshwater guys some love here coming up next. We got Aqua Pro Pros. If you don't know about him, check him out on YouTube. Um, it's going to be a really cool That's stream. He's coming place. in on Skype with us. We're talking freshwater planted tanks. So, awesome. Um, we will see you guys here see shortly. You Waterbox Aquariums now offers financing in the United States, Europe, and Canada. Visit Waterbox Aquariums for more information.